Welcome back to the Tapes Archive Podcast, where we release interviews that have never been heard before. In this episode, we have singer-songwriter David Crosby. At the time of this interview in 1998, Crosby was 56 years old and was promoting his tour with his new band, CPR. In the interview, Crosby talks about mistakes he's made in his life, how he connected for the first time with his 30-year-old musician son and bandmate, and how he's the happiest walrus you'd meet. David Crosby, you're my hero. Oh, you like my music? You're a musician? As always, we have music critic Mark Allen at the helm conducting the interview. If you'd like to support the show, please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. There, we post other content and information not available on the podcast. If you'd like to read the transcripts for any of our episodes, please head over to our website at thetapesarchive.com. We'll jump into the interview after a quick word from our sponsors. The Tapes Archive is proud to be sponsored by the true crime documentary, Dead Man's Line. You've got a hundred armed officers around here trying to get a shot at me. I dared him to shoot me. I didn't go down there to be a buffoon. I went down there for vengeance. And by God, I'll have vengeance. In 1977, Tony Karitsis kidnapped a mortgage broker and held him captive for three days. For the first time ever, the media was able to cover the event live. To some, Tony was a hero. To others, he was a crazed thug. Dead Man's Line. The true story of Tony Karitsis. This award-winning film is available exclusively on Amazon Prime. One last thing before we get to the interview, the Tapes Archive podcast is a proud member of Osiris Media, a global community connecting passionate fans with podcasts and experiences about artists and topics you love. Thanks for tuning in, and now it's time to open the vault. So uh, so this is really a, kind of an amazing story of this group, isn't it? I mean, if you if somebody handed it to you as a screenplay, man, you'd toss it. <laughs> you'd say, no, uh-uh, no, too unlikely. The best part isn't it isn't that it's just an odd story. The best part is the group works. Now, I guess from reading the, the bio, it was it was uh, Jan who first told you that uh, that James existed, right? Is that- yeah, I think she read the letter first. She told me that he existed and that now we knew who he was. I, I knew that there was a kid out there. His mom put him up for adoption when he was born and told me that she had done so. But she wouldn't tell me anything else. And uh, that was that. Where I live, uh, the rules are they, they won't let you track from the parent down, only from the kid up. Kid, you know, has been adopted and is in a, in a new home and thriving, and then some weirdo parent, you know, that lost the child in an alcoholic stupor or something comes knocking at the door saying, I want my baby back. <laughs> Doesn't work out too good. So, uh, you know, I knew he was out there and had beaten myself up some for it, you know, but uh, wasn't the fuck all I could do about it. And then all of a sudden there he was, and I mean, if you think it was well on my end, imagine him. He goes to find out who his birth mother was to put him up for adoption. He's curious, right? And he's like totally sane kid who's had a great life and a good childhood and all this stuff. And he goes to look, and, and he just happens to have had musical talent. So he became a musician. So he's been a musician 15 years. He looks at this page, and there's my name listed as father. Right. And he goes, oh, so that's where the weird chords came from. I mean, it's got to have been a shock. I know it was a shock. He told me it was a shock. Yeah. You, um, Hang on one sec. My, sure. my breakfast just got here. Don't yeah. go away. No, go away. You look familiar. What? What's your name? <laughs> I heard you say, I'm in a band. Or yeah. Something. Okay. So um, the, the, his mother is somebody you knew casually, I'm taking it? or uh, Not that casual. Not that, well, obviously uh, not terribly. We, we were an item for a while. And uh, she's a nice lady. And I've never seen her since. Wow. Yeah. I was just a kid, man. I mean, I couldn't have parented a Kleenex box. <laughs> Was it's you know I, I regret it, but it is better that it worked out the way it did. I mean, you know, most of us back then we were pretty careful not to have kids, and, and this, we were kids already. Yeah, and and this is you were you, when you say you were a kid, you were what about eighteen or something? Or, or yeah, eighteen, twenty, something. Like that. Yeah, and so this is this is before you're famous too, right? Oh yeah, long before. Yeah, I was just a kid playing in coffee houses. I, I mean, I, I 
I literally couldn't have done it. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the brains. <laughs> I didn't have nothing. But, uh, aside from the, the son that you've just had, the, um, do you have other children? Yeah. Oh. I have a daughter, Donovan Ann, who is 23, who's an artist. And I have uh, a little uh, boy named Django, who is uh, three. And he is a darling. Uh, do, does he go on the road with you at all? No. Oh, okay. We're, I mean, yes, if it's Crosby, Stills, and Nash, we make uh, so much money with Crosby, Stills, and Nash, we can afford to take a bus each. Right. But this is a baby band. And we can't do that. Yeah. So he's home right now. So when you first are, are hearing about this, so you, so you knew it was a, you had a child, so it's not a, a shock that this child, but, but it's probably a fair shock that this child's trying to find you after all these years, isn't it? More of a shock that he's a musician. When you look at him or when you watch I him mean, play? people do try to find each other. Yeah, oh, no, no question about it. But that he's a musician? Yeah. That's a shocker. Uh-huh. Then I find out how good he is. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's three times as good as I am, man. And I am not shitting you. I promise you, I am telling you the God's honest truth. Well, the record is really solid. I mean, it's just it's, it's a, it, or a very, very pleasant surprise, I must say. You know, I mean, I, I thought this has all the things about, like, the Crosby and Nash albums that I love, and it has, like, a Steely Dan element to it. I mm-hmm. just thought this is... Uh, yeah, I was listening to it and going, wow. When you look at him, and it, can you see resemblance? Do you, do you see yourself in him at all? Yeah. You can see uh, he looks sort of like I did, you know, back when I used to look good. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, you know, it's funny, because I, I think you look pretty cool now. No, I, thanks. Don't you think so? I mean, you look at yourself. Uh, I, think like, I think I look like the happiest walrus you met all the <laughs> Yeah, but. Uh, but given what you've gone through and given what happens to people oh, yeah, no, I, my friends tell me I look pretty good but it's mostly because I'm happy uh-huh. happiness is the greatest tonic in the world man yeah. it beats all that medicine shit just all hollow but I am happy yeah maybe that's it I mean you're smiling in like every picture well <laughs> I don't gotta fake it yeah <laughs> Tell you that. Okay, so you could see your, your resemblance in, in the way he looks, and uh, do you see resemblance in the way he plays at all? Oh, yeah, he's my kid. Yeah. There's no question. He's playing all the shit I would play if I could play. But, I mean, I, I can't. I'm not anywhere close to him as a musician. Not not even. I'm leagues, and I'm good. I'm not stu- I'm not bad. Yeah. I'm a good musician. But, no, not, <laughs> not even close. Yeah. Why, why do you think he's so much better? Because he didn't screw around. I think he had even more talent than I did. The only reason I get to be in the band, man, is I can still sing better than he can. <laughs> if you saw the writing process, man, it would just astound you. It's like a song fountain. Anything, any chord, any change, any word, and we're off and running. So one or two other things along the, the, the first line, and that is um, heredity versus environment. It's a big, uh, it's a, it's always a big scientific debate. Do you, <laughs> where do you weigh in? There's no debate. No debate. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't around. Yeah, I know, but uh, there he is. It has to be heredity. I mean, you know, it's not that, that you know, nature versus, versus nurture. I think it's both. I, I think there's no question that a person's environment affects them, but they spotted his nature early on and said, oh, this, this kid's, this, this boy uh, has music in him. Golly, uh, John, we, we've got to get him piano lessons. <laughs> and they did. And his adoptive parents are cool with us. Oh, man, they're wonderful. Right. They are some of the nicest people you ever met in your life. They're completely decent, wonderful human beings. And on the music end of this, a couple of songs. Well, let's start with Morris. And did you, did you know him? Mm, yeah, I know him. Yeah. I didn't like him. Uh, it was actually, um, most of the time he was drunk and most of the time he was obnoxious during the time I knew him anyway. Not a bad poet, but an obnoxious guy. So is his uh, legend romanticized that well out of proportion? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you see the movie? Yeah. Well, Val Kilmer is one of the best actors in the country, and he got the guy eerily well. I mean, it was, it was scary how well he did him. The, the line in the song, you know, I've seen the movie and it wasn't like that. And right. it, it's mostly because it sings good. <laughs> but it's also because Oliver Stone didn't quite get it. He was in a foxhole when it all went down. And uh, so he tended, to, he tended to paint it in slightly brighter colors than it was, too. But uh, 
No, Morrison was a tortured guy, man, and uh, the reason that, that it, he were, wound up inserting himself into the song is that he was lost. He was lost. A lost guy. And the song is about being lost, like a gull blown inland on a stormy day. Mm. That's the key line of the song. Is the uh, the legend of Morrison, that uh, is it out of proportion just because he died young, do you think? No, he's just, you know, general showbiz uh -huh. stuff. Plus, he died young. Plus, there wasn't anybody around like me who was a curmudgeon willing to say, eh, the guy was, was an asshole. <laughs> well, it just it goes against the popular notion, you know. Well, they didn't know him. I didn't. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Um, you make reference in uh, At the Edge to a life well lived. Is, uh, what do you think of your life? Life well lived? Mm. Good and bad, you know. Yeah. I've made some horrendous mistakes. Uh, wasted in probably the greatest of which was wasting time, which is also uh, you know uh, another one. In that time is the Final Currency song, which oh. I, I dearly love. I, At the Edge and Final Currency are probably my two favorites. You know, I mean, there's no point to regrets. It's pointless. What what you know what they teach you in the twelve step thing is to look at it all, learn from it. And then set it down, brother, because you can't go forward carrying a bunch of luggage. So I don't torment myself about it. Yes, I have made tons of mistakes, but, you know, they're not today, and they're not tomorrow. Today and tomorrow is, is, is what my focus is on and has been for a while. And that's making me very happy. And it's not that I, I'm not aware of what I've done, you know, but, you know. You know your shit isn't working too good if you wind up in a Texas prison, man. <laughs> Come on. You can't be being too smart. Yeah, um, but, but you got to admit that even the, I mean, the worst things that you've gone through, I mean, they're incredible experiences. And, and you know, sometimes, sometimes though, don't you think that, that going through a really terrible thing is, is even worthwhile just, just from what you learn from it? In a way, yeah, yeah. because uh, you wind up... Uh, you know, having you learn a lot. You know, if your head's open, you 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 learn. You do, and I did, and I have, and I still am. But my focus is 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 on today, now, tomorrow, five minutes from now. What am I going to write today? That's where it it is, and and I think that's where it should be. That's one of the reasons that this band is so important to me, is because it's vital. It's forward motion. I'm 56 years old, man. Most people at this stage of their lives are simply pulling the handle trying to get the same numbers to come up. I can't do that. I'm convinced that Dylan was right, that he was not busy being born, as busy dying. You know what Neil told me? What's that? He said, man, I'm really, I'm really happy about this band, man. I really like that game, man. And I said, why? He said, because uh, it's, uh, it's forward motion, man. It's in the direction you've always been going. And I said, yeah, it is. You're right. He said, I know. <laughs> I said, he said, Dave. I said, yeah. He says, leave awake. Leave awake? Uh-huh. He knows I'm a sailor. And I was saying the same thing, you know, forward motion. I could have called this band forward motion. Yeah, but CPR is a cool name. So. <laughs> I can't give it my medical history. It's kind of yeah. <laughs> and it worked. Um, Music to restart your heart. <laughs> So, uh, business-wise, what does it say when you're on, uh, what is this label called, Samson Music? Uh, Samson Music is uh, a huge stroke of good fortune. What Gateway Computers is? Sure. Okay, well, when it got to be two billion, that's with a B, billion dollar company, one of the two brothers, Norm Waite, split with his half and started an entertainment company, amongst other things, started an entertainment company called Gold Circle. Gold Circle was the parent company for a brand new record company named Samson Records, which is run by a guy that I respect tremendously named Mike Delich. Used to run gramophone records. It doesn't owe anything to anybody. It has a distribution deal with Sony Red, so it can get in every store in the world. And it doesn't owe any money to anyone, and it's completely independent. And the guy running it is very smart and doesn't want to do record business the old-style way. 
So what is he going to do different for you? I couldn't have written down a company that I wanted more. And what is he going to do for you that... uh, Oh, work a a record to its demographic instead of just shotgunning some singles out and hoping one of them's the handsomes. The majors, men are dead. They're dinosaurs. They haven't got a fucking clue. They wouldn't know a song if it flew up their nose and died. They are run by accountants and lawyers, and they are absolutely out of the fucking picture. They support these huge superstructures of debt and drones and thousands of people that do nothing. Six people in the building do all the work, and they do it badly. You couldn't get me to sign with a major right now for a million dollars. No problem. So when you're on the table in cash, I'll turn it down. So when you were uh, pitching this record to people, I didn't even go to them. Didn't go to a major. Oh. No, never talked to a one. I was looking for a smart independent with a lot of money, and I found one. Actually, they they found me. They 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 heard the record. I made it on my own money, and they heard the record, and they said, "That's it. We want that." So working this record to the demographic. What is the demographic for this record? Advanced singer songwriter stuff. You know, mm-hmm. Steely Dan, Bruce Hornsby, James Taylor. Jackson Brown. There's tons of people out there. And, you know, people like Paul Simon, people that like, you know, Sean Colvin, people that like Mark Cohen, people that like good singer songwriter shit. We're going to love this fucking band because it does that shit. Are there enough people? I, well, you know, I mean, Sean Colvin's proof that there, hey, there are enough not people. We're trying to be the Hansons. We okay. don't give a fuck if we don't sell three million records. So do you, do you have a target in mind? No. If, if, we, if we sell enough records. To make money for the record company and keep our access to the tools and be able to keep this band alive and keep playing. And every night we play, we play the best music I've played in 20 years. I don't care if I don't make a bunch of money. I didn't come here. I didn't do this to make money. That's not why I came to the party in the first place. I became a musician because I absolutely had absolutely no goddamn choice about it. I went out and sang in coffee houses for no money at all and starved. Because I want it to. <laughs> because it's fun. Because it's what I do. And this band is that. Purely. This band plays. you got to come hear us, man. That's all I can tell you. Because I, I I have no... I've used up all the superlatives I got. And, and it sounds too immodest for me to struggle around trying to tell you. Come hear the band. You tell me. A fair enough challenge. Sure. <laughs> What else about this uh, project do you want me to mention that we haven't talked about? That's it. i got to do another one of these. Okay. And uh, one last question, and that is for another story I'm working on. I've been asking everybody to interview, what is a record that everybody should own and almost no one does? Mm. Music of Bulgaria. On the Nonsuch label in the early 60s, distributed by Elektra. Music of Bulgaria by Philip Kutiv and the Bulgarian National Folk Choir and Dance Ensemble or folk choir and an orchestra, that's it. And it's probably one of the greatest records ever made. And very few people know it exists. Yeah, and, and there uh, was a follow-up to it done called Le Voix Mystère. And, and it's a French title, but it's a Bulgarian record. And the follow-up is good, but the original is mind-boggling. Mm-hmm. Some of the best singing that's ever been done on the face of the earth. Yeah. And, finally, and finally, I guess I have to ask, what, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, anything in the works or any plans? Yeah, we have six cuts in the, in the, in the can that we did uh, only a month or so, uh, or so ago, and we're working on them, and we're going to do some more recording this winter. Uh-huh. And uh, that's, so that'll come out sometime next year, probably? Yep. Do you have a label? Yep, I got to go. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. Until next time, the vault is closed.